was a small group of, of skilled pilots who really formed a bond. And, and Kirk and my father, uh, you know, were, were two of the uh, more senior pilots, actually, and um, formed a bond during the war. Um, after the war, they stayed in touch, and Kirk invited my dad out to Las Vegas to the opening of some of his casinos. And when I decided to uh, produce the film Flying the Secret Sky, I contacted him to see if he'd be willing to do an interview. And he agreed. And we went to his house and um, uh, more than once uh, and filmed the interview. They give you an airplane, whether it's a B-25 or a B-24. They give you a destination. They say, on your way. That we're flying an unflyable route. Before the war, he uh, was, was working at installing we heaters in houses. The guy he worked for was taking flying lessons. And back then, flying was this amazing new thing. And uh, he said he decided to, to put down $3 and take a flying lesson one day. And the moment he did, it, he fell in love with it as most pilots do. Flying the ocean was a far more difficult and dangerous task. I'll lose my friends, but I didn't realize a lot of it was a combination of aircraft that weren't quite perfected or weather. My dad was chosen to fly Winston Churchill uh, to a number of uh, important meetings during the war, including a meeting in Moscow. And Kirk also uh, holds the record, uh, he's, he actually is number two, holds the record for flying a mosquito across the Atlantic, the fastest uh, uh, time. He was a very competitive man <laughs> his whole life. And uh, the winds were right one day and he said, we're going to try it. And the mosquito was a very interesting airplane. It was made out of wood. He and another guy went and did it and Kirk arrived a couple of minutes later and many many biographers say that's the last time he ever uh, came in second in his life 